Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic the geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. Welcome, Chrissy Clark. Hello. My name is Chrissy Clark, and I make documentaries for public radio, but don't worry, I am not going to ask you for money right now. Um, I'm going to tell you about a vision that I had in the desert. But to understand that vi vi vision, you need to know a little bit about me. I am a fifth-generation Californian. My great-great-grandfather came to the Bay Area in 1848 on a mule. And the legacy of that is that as a kid, when I was growing up, I heard a lot of stories from my dad about the world that I was driving through all the time. So he would point at things and he would say, that used to be that. That industrial wind farm used to be our family's general store. Or that big eight lane freeway that goes up onto the Golden Gate Bridge that you see as you're approaching, that used to be my dad's personal jungle gym. He claims to have climbed it when the bridge was under construction. I don't know if I believe that, but what I did learn through all of that was that a landscape is made out of stories. It's sort of layers and layers of stories, like geologic strata. And that is what inspired me to become a radio reporter. I started moving around the world and asking questions about how places got to be the way that they were. So one of those questions was bad neighborhoods. We've all been through bad neighborhoods or avoided them. Why are they the way that they are? How did they get to be that way? I asked that question about a neighborhood in San Francisco um, in the Western edition, and it turns out that that neighborhood would not, was not always a bad neighborhood. In fact, it used to be in the 1940s a cultural mecca for the African-American community. It was called the Harlem of the West. But in the 1960s, uh, it was a target for urban redevelopment. And so there were 13,000 families that were moved out of San Francisco. Um, a lot of buildings were raised, and voila, you get a bad neighborhood. Another question I started asking about the landscape in San Francisco was, why is this city gay? Like, why of all of the cities in the world is San Francisco gay? And so it actually has a lot to do with this building up here, which is 710 Montgomery Street. It's now a kind of yuppie tapas restaurant. But in the 1940s, it was a cafe called the Black Cat Cafe. And a guy named Jose Saria would come and dress in drag, these lovely uh, black evening gowns, and sing songs about his life as a homosexual male. They were flamboyant and funny and provocative and political, and people started flocking to them. And the reason that they, he didn't get kicked out of that bar, as he would have in most other parts of the country at that time, is that San Francisco, it wasn't that it was so liberal, but it actually, it was a loophole in a post-prohibition way that uh, bars are regulated. In most parts of the country, bars are regulated by morality police, or were back then. But uh, in San Francisco, bars were regulated by tax collectors. And so they just wanted to get money. They didn't care what was going on in them. And voila, the gay rights movement was born in San Francisco. So these sorts of stories were on my mind as I was driving through a desert in Utah a couple of years ago. And I saw this cabin. And I had this urge. I wanted to know the stories about this cabin because I was out in the middle of nowhere. Why the hell was this cabin here? And I wanted to click on that cabin. Like you would click on a hyperlink. I just, maybe I'd been in front of a computer for too long. And I know that was a delirious idea back then, but as you know, it is not a delirious idea anymore, thanks to many of you in this room. You can click on the world. You can, clip on, you can click on the world and get information. So if we're driving through uh, the Utah desert right now and we clicked on this cabin, what kind of information would we get? Well, we'd get some cool Wikipedia articles. We'd be told that it is a desert, which we kind of already knew. We would also get some Yelp restaurant reviews, maybe some other bits of sort of drips and drabs from the internet. And that stuff is amazing, mind-blowing. My great-great-grandfather would be amazed. But one of the things that we aren't getting yet is stories, sto sort of the personal dramas, the economic policies, the environmental issues, the political struggles that make a place what it is and shapes the people who live there. 
sort of getting the meaning onto the landscape. And as a journalist, those are the sorts of stories that I tell all of the time. And there are actually thousands and thousands of archives of those sorts of stories that are locked up right now and don't really have a home out in the world. And so what I'm interested in doing is getting those stories, those archives, onto the world so that we can click on them. So say we're driving through Utah, we see that cabin. Maybe we click on it and we find out, and this is true, I researched it, that it, that cabin happens to be as desolate as it is in one of the uh, counties that has the highest job growth in the country over the last 10 years. Or we find out that it was a place where a radioactive waste facility is about to be built. So it's those sorts of stories, not just in Utah, but all over the country, all over the world, that I'm interested in putting onto the landscape. And if you want to talk to me about that, please do. My email was there. You can click on me. Thanks. Thank you.